Hello DevOps people, welcome. It's Wednesday and it's beautiful weather outside, here in Ireland at least. And uh, what do we do if there's beautiful weather outside? We do what we always do. We do some live coding. Welcome. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, I hope you're staying safe and sound, as do I. Today, I thought I'd uh, start a little bit early and um, spend a little bit more time coding on my Twitch chat bot. Uh, that's been a lot of fun lately. Oh, hey, Julian, welcome. I hope you're doing good. How are you? Yeah, I thought uh, I'd extend my, my stream time a bit. Um, I'm enjoying the current Twitch chat bot project a lot, and I'd like to make some progress with it. Um, it's both a fun exercise with a result that's uh, easily visible in chat for, for both sides of this stream, both me and you, my viewers. And um, it's also a great learning experience because um, this project isn't based it's, yeah, it's it's not really based on anything that someone else has built in the sense that it's a framework that I'm just um, using as documented. And just yesterday, uh, last night, um, I finally found out how, what's the difference between um, require and require relative um, and uh, also how to uh, write proper RSpec specs, things like that. Um, yeah, things like that um, often are taken for granted, or you simply copy how the documentation or Stack Overflow tells you to do. And um, at least in my case, I'm not sure um, if you are uh, better coders than me, uh, but I often make assumptions that uh, then turn out not to be true. And um, this project really uh, helps me uh, get more into the basics of Ruby and um, uh, testing, building gems, things like that. And uh, as someone who thrives, uh, when he learns something new, um, that's just amazing and it's a lot of fun. And that's why I thought, okay, let's uh, start a bit early, see if the usual gang is around, and um, let's do some work on this thing. I've also thought a, lo uh, a bit about um, how to um, refactor my code so it's better, um, easier to extend. Um, and, um, we'll see if that actually gets me where I want to be. Um, the code of my, uh, Twitch chat bot is twofold. It's, uh, first of all, the Twitch bot gem that, uh, supplies the foundation. It takes care of the IRC connection to Twitch and provides a bunch of classes that you can use to build your own bot. And uh, that's my uh, second repository that I've also added to this VS Code workspace. Uh, and this project is called 10x. That's the Twitch bot that I'm running myself. And um, with time, I'll discover things that might be useful if they are if they are provided by the uh, foundation the the basic twitch bot gem so i can actually take code out of 10x and make it more generic and put it into my um, library so everyone can benefit from that just earlier today i also um uh read a question from a fellow live coder um, who asked about extending Nightbot 
And uh, that's when I thought, well, maybe we'll be able to actually build something similar to Nightbot. That would require us to also have a web application that um, controls the bot and allows um, uh, a multi-tenant operation. So that's a, a bit f uh, uh, further in the future. But um, let's see um, where we can grow this project. First of all, let's get uh, the basic things done first. And um, yesterday I realized that it's terribly hard to test components of my Twitch bot library because they are too tightly coupled. And uh, today I'd like to um, uh, change that. So, uh, what I've already done is I've modified the twit message file here and I took one message type, the standard chat message message and we'll change that name as well because it's really stupid and um, uh, instead of making it uh, require an IRC message being passed in, uh, we can directly initialize it with the current two attributes that are relevant here, which is the message text and the user who sent the message. So it's perfectly simple to instantiate this uh, chat message, which also makes it easy to test. So over... Um, I don't know if we, if we even have a test for that. No, we don't. So there is no Twitch message spec file corresponding to this uh, library file. We probably should uh, change that. But uh, in order to do that, I'll have to check where we are with this. So let's create a second terminal here for the Twitch bot repository and I'm already in a branch 6 Twitch message refactor and that references uh, the issue number 6. Twitch message classes are hard to use in tests. I think I've implemented a test in my 10x bot code here. Haven't I? No, I have not. But uh, that should become much easier now. So let's see. Here we have the basic event. We'll call it a message. Um, and we instantiate the chat message message with a text, namely the plan command that I'd like to test. And we pass in a username tester. Uh, then we'll have to instantiate a message handler. And that's the plan command handler that uh, um, I'd like to test here. We'll pass in the message as an event and then we'll have to pass in a client. So let's instantiate that. That's a Twitch bot client and uh, it will require to pass in a connection and we'll use nil here. Maybe we can get away with that. And a channel, and we call the channel test channel. And in order to test if the client actually received send message from our plan command handler, we need to instrument that. Allow client to receive send message. Uh, that's enough. C. 
so uh, that should do the trick. Let's see if that works. Uh, we need to be in 10x, so different terminal. And here we are on bundle, exec, rspec, spec, 10x, plan command handler. Okay. I don't, it doesn't recognize the Twitch bot namespace. I think we can. Fix that by using require relative here. It's going to be still doesn't work. I'm not sure if that actually works here. So that's spec helper out, then it uh, goes out of the spec directory into lib and then it loads 10x, which actually loads what's necessary here. But we never require the Twitch bot library in the first place, so I guess that's what we should do here. Require Twitch bot. That's better. Now it tries to instantiate that. Undefined method text for text plan user tester hash. Oh, uh, yes, that the reason for that could be that um, the newest version of the Twitch bot library hasn't been released yet. So I guess I should... Mm, build a workaround where I do a local require if uh, we are in development. Ruby development require gem or load gem locally, something like that. Or I could simply install the gem locally.
That might be the quicker way to do things. So, um... Here we have version... I guess it's 110. It's not actually breaking API, but it's also not just a change behind the scenes or a hotfix or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a minor bump here. And... Uh, minor version bump. As we've seen recently, um, the gem build process uses uh, Git to determine which files to load, so we should uh, have um, a clean um, working tree here. And we do. So rake install should build and install the gem 110. And then we'll go over to 10x and require Twitch bot. Well, it's 1.0, so we can simply do a bundle update. Bundle update uh, Twitch bot. And it actually loaded 1.1.0. Awesome. So... Now we should be able to... Oh, um, no, that's that's ourselves. Let's, let's switch to 10x here and do a bundle update Twitch bot. Did not upgrade it. Hmm. Okay, so I still want to find out how other people do that. Let's find out how we can do that without any side effects. Doesn't look like it covers that topic. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's what I'd like to do. development thing. That seems to be the cleanest approach. So we could go into the gem file for 10x and say if we are in development and I'll have to use the development 
option for bundler, I think. Uh, we can then... find out how bundler uh, how to manage groups of gems bundle install uh, bundle install will by default um, apparently Install everything, and we need to do bundler. Bundler required default development. Don't use. I. Th I don't think we use bundler require though. So we'll have to find out if that's necessary. We could simply do bundle install with development. Let's try that. Bundle install with development. The with flag is deprecated because it relies on being remembered across bundle invocation, which bundler will no longer do in future versions. Instead, please use bundle config set with development and stop using this flag. And uh, actually, now it did upgrade Twitch bot. Okay, so we'll simply in, uh, uh, use a local configuration bundle config set with development and now if we do bundle install it will automatically use twitch bot from the local directory and uh, we should also reflect that in our setup file here bundle config set with development and then we'll do a bundle install that way people can simply uh, use the setup file and have a proper development environment automatically okay so that might solve our problem uh, it does in a way, but it uh, creates a different error message now. So let's make this a little bit wider. Twitch bot client. Undefined method client. Yeah, I think we have a typo there with a capital C. Yeah, it's not client isn't the method, new is the method. And now we expected to get hello and we got we're working on our Twitch chatbot, which is my actual plan file. So uh, calling this uh, event handler actually works. However, And respond with hello, I guess. Nope. Uh, I 
think and is a method. No, it's not. Let's find out how allow actually works. Our spec uh, mock allow. Verifying toggles. Configuring responses and return. It's not respond with, it's return. Okay. And return. Now we definitely need an underscore here and return. Yeah, I thought so. Um, to have received send message, we probably need to mock a little bit more so the local file isn't required. And uh, that needs to be mocked somewhere in our plan command handler, where I guess plan file content needs to be mocked as well. Don't feel good about mocking private methods and I'll have to investigate that if there is actually a, a good way to do that. But for the time being we'll, we'll go with that. So we also need to Here we need to return hello. It's not send message. Send message doesn't even return anything, I think. So now we are good. Okay, let's take another look at our test. We need to set up a client because that needs to be passed in. And we might. Yeah, and it uh, needs to, we, we need it to mock send message. And then we'll instantiate the handler and uh, mock its platform content method. And then we exercise the actual handler call method and check if things are okay. Let's, I think it's decent. There might be room for improvement still, but um, I think it's decent. At least it's much easier now than it was before, thanks to changing the behavior of our message classes. So that proves that uh, we are on the right track here. However, I'm not happy about the whole namespace thing, and I've already uh, added this to do a while ago, yeah, two weeks ago. Um, I guess we should have a message namespace. I think that'll simplify things a bit. And since we are only using messages uh, internally at the moment, all the bot users are using are the event handlers at the moment. 
that should also be okay to change things because it's more or less an internal API. So let's introduce another module here. Module message. That way we can actually get rid of a lot of, uh, wait, what's that? Incorrect indentation, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, a lot of uh, superfluous naming here. We'll simply rename Twitch message to base because that's now Twitch bot message base. And it's still, uses Twitch bot event as its base class. And then we'll simply use uh, not supported and inherit from base. Then there's ping inherit from base. There's mode. Authenticated. And we'll call that text. That is that. So now we can rename this to message, which also I think makes things easier or clearer. So we can remove that to do <clears throat> and we'll have to change our plan command handler now or the the test at least because here oh we didn't even have to instantiate a message here we're exercising the plan command handler directly. Okay, that's fine. So let's find out if our library still tests okay. Nope, it does not because uh, Our includes don't work anymore. That's fair. So bot needs to actually load message. And I guess we'll also rename the IRC message namespace to IRC. 
that'll simplify things as well and uh, remove the ambiguity between IRC message and other message. And now we need to change our tests in the message parser spec. No, actually in message parser directly. Because here we need to instantiate a message subscription. some message text ah text is a bit too generic i think we we'll call it chat message or user message Message ping. Here it's message authenticated. Message join and message not supported. That should work, and we'll have to rename our message again, so that's not text anymore. It's user message. Okay, uh, we still run into namespace issues. Let's see if we can fix that by using the full namespace. Oh, no, no, this is another instance where we need to fix our namespace. Well, nice. Let's see how ten X tests. Oh, here we actually instantiate the message. Okay, that's fine. Do we actually use it? We don't. We do. <laughs> yeah, of course. So that's actually tweet bot message user message. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I'm starting to get a grasp on these code smells. The fact that I had to... Um, mock plan file content here, which is a private message, um, might indicate that um, that should be actually a different class. So the handler um, should actually just um, be similar to a controller in a Rails application. It takes the request, um, which is the plan command coming from chat, um, and um, it dispatches uh, the, the action. But the action shouldn't be in the controller itself. Um, it should probably delegate to something like a plan file class that returns the um, contents of a plan file. And that would allow us to um, mock the plan file class completely and uh, or, or um, uh, inject uh, a, a dummy class and uh, that way avoid having to uh, mock a private method. But I don't want to spend too much time on this and I don't want to break a record in clean code. I'd rather see my code here become usable first. So, um, in the same manner we've changed the uh, user message class, we should also um, change the rest. And that is, take the parsing of an IRC message out of this message um, and put it back where it belongs, into the message parser. So, um, I guess we'll simply go through each parser here that returns uh, something and uh, and um, take care of the parsing. So, uh, for example, here we have our ping message, and we don't pass in the raw IRC message, instead, we already um, take its components and assign what we need, which in the case of the ping message is a user and a host name, and we'll pass that in. I think we could even only pass in a host name. Not sure why we even have a user here, because I'm really not, uh, I really don't care about the user in this case. Uh, it's probably because of code that I uh, took from the Twitch chat gem. So, hostname, why is it underlined? Unused method argument, that's correct, because um, we'll replace message params last with hostname. And that's the ping message taken care of, which means we need to pass in a hostname in the form of the last parameter here. That's ping. Now on to subscription. Here we actually only need the user. Uh, 
and then we have a user manager user message we already are dealing with that now we have a mode message the mode message Oh, that's a channel mode, I see, okay. That's actually a moderator change, okay. So we guess, I guess we'll have to here to pass in a user and a mode and params User is parents last. Mode is this mode change. And params. This message params. Oh, params was just a helper variable. So we're done here. Maybe we should also rename this from mode into moderator change or something. That might actually be a better name, but I'm not sure about that yet. I need to uh, familiarize myself with the actual IRC protocol a bit, little bit better. Uh, there seems to be a syntax issue. Pico78, hi, how you doing? Hope you're doing good. So, where's my syntax error? It's probably a, some unmatched parentheses or There's something in there. No, it's not.
From what I can see, that here something breaks, and I'm not sure why, because uh, well, it all seems to it all seems to add up here. Let's try and reindent. Mode change. Line six seventy six. The, the numbers are relative. You can see my current line, but uh, let me simply um, connect my code helper here. So now you can use the uh, line command, exclamation mark line, to highlight a line in my editor if you'd like to uh, highlight something. And um, note that um, it displays the line number uh, of the line I'm in, and everything else is relative to that line number. Uh, normally, additional commas aren't a problem. Um, they are, um, most, most often they are helpful because uh, they allow you to, for example, sort a list alphabetically without um, uh, creating issues with missing or extraneous commas. Somehow, somehow, it already complains about class here. I'm not sure why. If I take this away... Oh, look at that. So the issue is actually in here. Uh, it might be that I... That, sorry, that I can't define a constant in here. Yeah, I think that did the trick. Okay. Uh, you can highlight using the line command. So if we are now in line 80, so uh, exclamation mark line 80 highlights the current line. You obviously get blank between line and the line number. What about this line? Now I have to find out how to remove highlights. Uh, no, that's not a problem. Um, uh, I even 
enforce adding commas for every line in such a block. Uh, Ruby allows um, having uh, a um, a uh, trailing comma even at the last element of an array or of a hash. And uh, that allows us to, uh, for example, um, uh, swap these lines without getting into issues. Um, so I could take this line and put it here if I like, and I wouldn't have to take care of moving commas around. Um, so um, my Rubocop configuration actually enforces adding commas. So if I'm uh, leaving this comma off, I immediately get a squiggly line telling me, put a comma after the last item of a multi-line hash. Okay, I think we've changed. No, we, we haven't. Uh, I need to uh, still go and uh, modify the other message types. So let's continue with what we were doing. See, the authenticated message doesn't use anything. So I guess we shouldn't even pass in a message then. Interesting that Reek complains about doesn't depend on instance state, but that's not a problem in this case, I'd say. Um, I'll probably disable Reek for, for this class then. So this command parser doesn't do anything uh, except uh, simply pass uh, responding with an uh, authenticated message. But that's fine. It doesn't have to use instance state here. It's not always a code smell, I think. Uh, join now has the same issue. We don't... Well, join... has at least a bunch of tags, if not a, a, a user name. Uh, let's find out. Hello, IRC join message. Join channels keys makes the client join. Oh, okay. Oh, that's ourselves. It's the message that we have joined the channel. Okay, that's fine. So we don't need to pass in a message. Let's just say we well, specifying the passwords if needed in the comma separated list keys. No, that's okay. Okay, so join doesn't need a message either. Oh, 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 oh. Attention, attention. Pig's a logic dev is raiding us with his BAM of male developers. I know this. Protect your root passwords, guys. Protect your root, root passwords. Let's get groovy. Hey, Pig's a logic dev. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for raiding us. Welcome to Full Stack Live, where we do heavy refactoring and um, removing code smells all, all over the place. It's spring, so it's time to um, do some spring cleaning here. Thanks for following Mr. Demon Wolf and DNS Jam, EM, not IM, IAM. Uh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, welcome. Protect your passwords from these raiders. Welcome. Happy to have you here. Um, yeah, I hope you had a great stream. 
Uh, still working on your mobile app? Oh yes, I do. Um, uh, I do have follower mode on. I've switched that on uh, a few days ago, um, and I might switch that off again. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's uh, switch that off. There we go. Ooh, deadline coming up. There we go, Mr. Demon Wolf. <laughs> you don't have to wait for 10 minutes anymore. Uh, yeah, it actually was intentional. I was a, uh, um, I reread um, Noop Cat's article about Twitch streaming, and uh, she mentioned that she had, at least last year, um, a, uh, I think even a 30-minute uh, followers-only um uh, switched on and I thought well uh, if she does that uh, it might make sense uh, but um, to be honest I didn't have any issues so far with not having followers mode on um, so yeah and it actually makes things easier especially for raids where where people come in who simply don't follow yet thanks for the hint all righty so yeah it's a beautiful afternoon here in Ireland and we do what we always do on a beautiful afternoon we stay inside and code and um, I'm working on my Twitch chat bot um, where I've taken an existing uh, Ruby gem for Twitch chat uh, that have hasn't been maintained in five years and uh, I'm completely revamping it and uh, uh, refactoring it to make it more maintainable and to make it easier to build a chatbot using this library. So um, uh, it, I, I aim at building a framework basically that allows me to simply uh, instantiate a few classes like command handlers and then I can implement a command. So uh, the, the end goal is something like this here. Uh, here we have a plan command handler and uh, that allows us to enter a command exclamation mark plan and uh, all this command does is output the contents of a file dot plan in my home directory where I maintain um, uh, what I'm working on and um, so uh, if I launch my bot again Let's do that. Uh, I need to change projects here. And let's uh, do bundle exec, x uh, 10x. Here's the bot. And now you can use the exclamation mark plan command and the bot will actually tell you what I'm working on, which I've already told you, so it won't be a surprise. Yeah, so I uh, I want it to be that easy simply by um, creating a new event handler class and basically implementing the call method. That uh, is all you should have to do to implement a new chatbot command. And um, I'm partly there. And um, so let's keep working, shall we? Well, um, I was just about to refactor um, a bunch of classes that I just introduced recently, and uh, I'll continue that. So um, here we have the subscription message. And uh, we already pass in a user here. That's brilliant. So that seems to be Okay, already. Here we have the room state commands where we pass in a message to different modes. For example, the follower mode. I'm doing excellent. 
Excellent. Uh, really doing great. I've started early today just to have a little bit more time before dinner um, because I really have a lot of fun of, uh, with this project. Not only is it something uh, that um, it, uh, has visible results, um, it's also um, uh, a great le learning experience for me because I've never built um, a Ruby library that I've actually open sourced and uh, used for something more serious. And uh, so, um, yeah. Doing a little housekeeping instead of uh, doing coding. I can, I can see uh, myself doing that as well. Just chilling and uh, trying out things. I've just recently uh, added this uh, bottom bar where, uh, just earlier today, I added the bottom bar where I uh, list my, my latest followers and subscribers. So yeah, I can relate. Let's see. Uh, this here is actually pretty simple. No, Siri, you're not meant. Um, uh, I didn't address you, Siri. Uh, that is pretty simple, and that probably will get a little bit more complex now, because I can't just pass in the raw IRC message anymore. We need to actually parse that. Let's see how complex this is going to get. So here we have the different mode classes. I guess we need more parses here. Coding the interrupts exactly with protocols and uh, ports and all that stuff. With ESO OC or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. So, how did I do that before? Yeah, here we have parse command and then we call command parser. You PO'd your resident guru. <laughs> okay. And your guru doesn't take well to being corrected. Not from a junior. Oopsie, oopsie. Don't anger a wizard. <laughs> Mr. Could use of then in his code for an as in call. It's actually doing given when then. <laughs> I actually don't remember the, the, the complete code. How, how, how does it go? Um, don't anger a wizard. Let's find out. Up, oh, wrong parse, wrong browser window. Don't anger a wizard. Don't meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are subtle and quick to anger. That's what I meant. You have no idea how to fix it. Well, Sounds like an innocent mistake. Uh, and, well, depends on... Uh, <laughs> you're right with Pocket Pimp. Yeah, that's something I'll have to teach uh, 10 eggs. Let's uh, quickly... Uh, 
make a file with a comment. Um, anger command handler.rb to do build command with JRT uh, quote don't meddle in the affairs of wizards. I might even extend that to some kind of a quote um, command. So I can simply enter exclamation mark quote wizard or quote anger, something like that. And then it'll pull up this, this quote. We could have a file with a, a, a dictionary of, of quotes. Um, that's something I'd like to implement. But first, uh, let's get our class hierarchy right here. Well, yeah, uh, so depends on the personality of this person, but um, um, if he's um, only a senior developer, he should uh, accept that a junior uh, makes mistakes and um, should appreciate a junior admitting a, making a mistake. And uh, so I'm, I'm really serious now. Um, and uh, I'd expect someone... Um, uh, uh, on that level to to uh, simply forget about things like that, um, innocent mistakes. Uh, otherwise, I would call him not a senior developer, but a senior asshole. Regardless, I'm a speaker at conferences too. Last week I, I did a talk uh, at the Life Coder conference in, in front of 13,000 people, and um, I will not get angry at juniors for making uh, for for simple misunderstandings that's just not acceptable <sighs> getting me riled up people like that give uh, us seniors a, a, a bad rap so I guess I have to introduce new parser classes here because I can't just create uh, my message classes directly, I'll have to parse things first. <laughs> so we also need a uh, mental note uh, command or something like that. But yeah, I, I definitely stand to that quote. Okay, um, I guess we need a class slow mode parser, also from command parser. And here we parse these things, and then the same for followers only mode, and subs only mode, and R9K mode. So, slow mode parser, followers only parser, subs only, mode no it's at the mode yeah and r9k mode parser <laughs> uh, <clears throat> are you new to to the company uh, do you have to to actually uh, be afraid of repercussions? But still. Uh, 
I think if a mistake like that gets you into serious trouble and gets you fired, that's probably a good thing. Otherwise, you... You'll be afraid with, with every step you make. That's... Behavior like that has such a chilling effect. Um, yeah. SMH, seriously. Forming alliances, having your own network is always a good thing. Um, but you shouldn't need that to protect yourself against uh, people like that, really. Okay, so now we'll have to change things to slow mode parser. Oh, well, uh, followers only mode parser, subs only mode parser. Uh, so we'll have to first call these parsers and we'll simply say Look up the parser and then parse a new message call. And call then will return the correct message, and that's in this case a slow mode message. Message slow mode, and we'll have to. Take these this information message slow mode new where status is the slow tag and the channel is the message channel. So what I'm doing is I extract the parsing of an IRC message out of my um, actual message classes so that I can initialize these message classes with the um, resulting content already. So I can actually pass in the already passed status and the channel. And we don't have to deal with IRC inside these message classes anymore. That's all going into the parser class where it belongs. Was a business analyst was kind of part of the role, I guess. Yeah, sure. Some you get along with, others you don't. That's that's uh, uh, basic wisdom. Yeah, um, you can't be friends with with everyone, but um, yeah, as I said, you don't want to be afraid with every move you make, and uh, that shouldn't be the the atmosphere you're working in, where you need to watch every step because you might anger the wizard. Come on. What kind of culture is that? That's not culture. That's fascism. So, slow mode. Um, 
Business owners are already turned to Chesco with the early movers, the late adopters who just hope they would catch up. Yeah. It's a bit like uh, in the book Crossing the Chasm, isn't it? Local dev group, not work. Okay. Oh. Then it's not that uh, existence threatening, isn't it? Where's the cheese? Yeah, that's that's another classic. I haven't read that. Um, but uh, or is it who moved my cheese? Something like that. Okay, so it's not serious at all. Okay, so okay, calming down now. Because I'm really about uh, uh, company culture, um, and uh, hearing stuff like that uh, just riles me up. So we've implemented uh, slow mode and made slow mode a really simple class that only um, transports attributes. And now let's do the same with uh, followers only, where we only need to parse the tags. So we'll actually call message followers only mode new and we'll pass in status I'm, I'm really happy with uh, how things are changing here because I'm moving all the IRC parsing into this file and uh, the message file then um, becomes much simpler with much simpler classes and uh, in turn these classes will be much easier to test because I don't have to deal with IRC anymore if I want to instantiate a message class. We'll simply pass in the tags or the channel names or things like uh, things that we need instead of having to construct an IRC message uh, only to create a followers only mode message something like that. So that's that. Uh, we pass in a status, which means that changes to status. Okay. Subs only mode works the same way. We get a status in a channel. <clears throat> and we create a message subs only mode no it's not message dot it's message subs only mode new that which means we can pass in a status and a channel and finally the r9k mode where we do the same just with a different tag Message R nine K mode new And then I guess login failed doesn't need a message because that speaks for itself. So let's find where login failed is defined. It's up here. Okay, we actually need the user. Why do we need the user? Hmm. Well, it doesn't hurt. So we pass in the user instead of
and not supported neat the whole IRC message because uh, we might want to identify why this IRC message is not um, supported. We might want to log it or something, even though, well, it's already been logged. Hmm. But still, let's uh, pass in a message here. Not supported. It actually stores the message. Okay, fine. Now, let's see if our tests will work. Ending the bot, and uh, let's do a rake spec. Okay, our simple bot tests green, but how about our library here? Rake spec. Oh, that breaks. So we don't have a method tags. Interesting. Okay, sure. Yeah, we pass in the status and the channel here. I forgot to fix that. And here for ping, we don't have a method user anymore because we don't need it. So let's fix that. And here it looks like we have a typo. Mode new. Yeah. Params needs to be message params. Cool. All test screen. So I could as a business uh, made progress. Others oh, didn't. And after three years, the ones that didn't were unhappy with their progress. Sure. Yeah. As they say, you can't carry a horse to the water. Or something like that. Okay. Okay, let's find out how easy we can build this quote um, handler. Now that things are working, um, I'd like to test them with a new handler. We'll change the anger command handler to a quote command handler. So let's rename that. Quote command handler. I'll steal a few things from our plan command handler here, so I don't have to uh, where is it? Quote command handler. I haven't loaded it. Where is it? Here we are. So that's the quote command handler. We'll handle a chat message as always. Now we could, we should use, uh, we should change that to user message, which is a bit of a breaking change, but we are very early um, in our development, so I'm not sure if I should do a major release for that. Um, but I'd like to be at least a little bit consistent here um, with my class naming, and I've just renamed chat message to user message. So its type should also be user message, which will break a few things, but uh, it'll be quick to fix.
Yes, I do think uh, it, uh, it does. So uh, we'll handle a user message. Well, what is it complaining here? We don't have a descriptive comment. Yeah, we'll add that later. And um, to make things easy, um, in, in this case, uh, we'll just um, have a static hash of quotes. Uh, so let's say we'll have a quote wizard. And uh, we'll simply copy the Tolkien quote, which is gone. Let's see. Here we are. Well, let's copy the attribution as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll need a freeze here to make sure it stays a constant. And then um, in call, oh, now we need something new. Uh, let's find out. Okay, so if the bot command is quote, We should have a new function that gives us, well, basically the arguments of that command. So um, I'd like to return, what, what did we have before? Output plan file, and that is send message, client send message. So we could do something like client send message. Quote, event, command, arguments, uh, first. I'll have to define the command arguments method first, but uh, that should do the trick. And here in uh, the quote method, Let's call it quote text. So we'll simply return quote. something like that. We could even move that to the private section here. And now we'll just have to implement the command args method for our event that is in our chat library. That's something that I'd like to provide my users with. Uh, yes, Dota 2 Attitude. Uh, after 22 days, I wouldn't actually be able to uh, explain a, a pull request anymore um, if the commit messages aren't very, very well written. So here I have to extend my chat user message class. That's the event we are dealing with at the moment. And user message not only should have a bot command method, it should also have a command args method. Where we use text, the message text namely, and we'll split that by white space.
and just uh, delete the first or something. How do we deal with an array here? Um, Ruby array. There is surely a nifty method that allows me to delete something. Delete at zero. So we'll simply remove the first um, part of that string because that's the actual command. We could even define a command method where we take this. And then we'll simply say it's a bot command. Oops. If our command matches. Oh, now we'll have to. Um, We call that check command. And we'll remove the leading exclamation mark. And then we can actually also check without well we could even do a direct comparison then oh come on I'm 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 building the basic plumbing for to simplify things, but the co quote command handler is really simple, isn't it? Or did you refer to your PR? Are you actually criticizing me? Okay. Otherwise, I'd have to chase the chase the mods after you, which I don't have. Okay, which means we should now have a wizard quote. Uh, but first I'll have to fix a few things that I've broken um, because I've changed um, chat message to user message. Uh, that needs to be fixed here. Okay, and we'll have to fix the library itself. And that's where a good, oh, that's the, that's the bot. Uh, that's where a good test suite uh, is awesome because you can really depend on not breaking things without noticing it. So uh, here we actually failed. Making a PR faster would be difficult to do. Well, Oh, come on, OPP, my lack of comments. As if I didn't have enough comments already. And Reek is complaining about missing comments as well. Everyone is ganging up on me. A PR is a pull request um, where you send um, a branch for peer review and uh, suggesting that uh, your branch may be merged into master. So it's a, uh, you apply to have your branch merged into, into master. TBD Gamer, hi, how's it going? Doing excellent. Having a lot of fun with my, with my chatbot here. 
Uh, if I can fix this final little thing here, where I've broken my plan handler, why did it break? Why did it break? We already using user message. So, um, my client did not receive send message anymore. So I guess the handler doesn't recognize the plan command anymore. So I've broken the command recognition here. Mm, how did I do that? We'll split everything. We'll take the first element and remove the exclamation mark. Let's find out. That's what we have pry. That's what we have pry for. We're not right there. No, the, the, the bot isn't running at the moment, so... Um, Wait, where's my... That's strange. We did not even call bot command. No, I'm confused. It's uh, bindings.pry, right? No, it's binding.pry, and that's what causes the debugger thing here. And uh, so in message, we need binding.pry as well. So here we have it. Um, Event is my plan command with the it's a user message from tester. Okay, and now we'll step into bot command. What is check command? That's plan. What is command? Oh, that's exclamation mark plan. Ah, I see why. No, I don't see why. I have a string here where I should have where I should have a regular expression if I'm using the caret here to uh, signify that that it's a leading exclamation mark. Things could be so easy. Mm, continue. Continue. Yeah. Great. Good. So let's remove the debugger breakpoints. Plan command handler. So I guess my bot should be able to work. Uh, let's find out. Bundle exec tags. Here we go. Here he is. And with quote wizard. Oh. 
Oh, I haven't registered my my uh, handler yet. So uh, where's my main thingy? No, that's not it. I need this one. We need to. Oops. Register the quote command handler, and we need to in require that as well. Here he is again. Quote wizard. Nope. Broke. Initialized. Constant. Quote. Command handler. Quote. Did you mean quotes? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, where is it? Uh, so it's a... Uh, quotes. Yeah, the, the bot always says hi guys when um, when he joins the channel. That's just to signify that he's there. Now I should be able to use quote wizard. Nope, still breaks. Undefined method first for quote wizard string. Because command arcs doesn't work. So I should actually uh, build a few tests, I guess. Uh, that way I wouldn't have to test in production here. So a few unit tests would really work wonders here. It's a bit chaotic at the moment, but uh, I'd like to see this work. Um, let's find out. So I call event command arcs, which means my user message or the message itself. We should have different files for these things. So command arcs. Let's find out what happens. Quote wizard. Oh, okay, I can't use the debugger in, in this uh, in production because um, we are running multi threaded here. It doesn't even know binding pry in this context. Okay. Still, uh, we're splitting using S's instead of white space, which won't work. And that's, well, that returns an empty array, or even nil. So first, no, it shouldn't. It should return the wizard thingy. However, we should actually check if, if it exists. Uh, so, um, I guess we need something like check quote equals name argument. Name argument, then uses event Don't need the additional method here. Could as well.
well, let's simply if quote, quote, quote. Oops. What's happening? Say quote keyword missing quote name missing. Okay, remove that. Now we get the command back from the command arcs. Yeah, I should have done that in a test-driven way, and that way I wouldn't stumble around like this. So we actually split it, and uh, delete at zero doesn't work. Interesting. It deleted one. Can we simply use pop or something like that? That does return. What does pop do? Removes the last element, and then I think it's shift. Uh, the other thing. Or unshift even. No, it's shift. Removes the first element of self and returns it. Well, I don't want to return it. Let's try it out. Um, if I have an array, or let's say we have a, a command quote test, and then we'll split that That gives me this, and then we'll do delete at zero. Huh. That's unexpected. Delete it. How does this index work? Deletes the element at the specified index. <clears throat> See also slice. Let's take a look at slice then as well. So if I ant bat cat dog delete at two should delete cat. And it returns cat. That's the issue. It uh, all uh, just as uh, shift does. It returns the element that got removed. Returning that element. Here we are. So, um, what does slice do? Deletes the element given by an index, returns the deleted object. That's the same thing, isn't it? So I guess um, I can actually use shift. No, I can't use shift. Ah. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, I didn't expect that as well, uh, but it does exactly that. And that uh, allows you to iterate over an array, shrinking the array in the process. So it does make sense if you, for example, treat your array like a stack or uh, like a list, uh, you can repeatedly shift, for example, it's like a register. You can shift um, and you get the first element that popped out. Um, 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 process that and then you do another shift and you do another shift and in the end when your array is empty it re shift returns nil and you exit your loop um, so it does make sense but it's not what I need right now um, I'd like to actually remove an array element and get the array back and I'm pretty sure there is a, a method for that and I just can't think of it So let's ask Dr. Go. Uh, Ruby delete array element. Pop returns these, delete does the same. Yes, uh, I'm really stupid. Why don't we variables are already invented so uh, why don't I uh, use that um, it's still um, yeah we split it and then we use everything from element number one onwards and that's also slice isn't it Where's my array documentation? Slice. Start length. Uh, or simply index. Returns the element of the index. I think I'm, I'm getting tired or something. My, my brain doesn't work anymore. So I would say args, then I do args shift, and then I return args. But that's very unruby-esque. Hey QP, how you doing? Um, yes, I also can use tap to simplify things. Uh, Strange, but that should actually take care of things. So, um, well, let's give our bot another try, I guess. Uh, so where's, where's my bot command? Here he is, quote, wizard. Still breaks. Undefined method shift for array. Come on, can't do that to me. Array tab, uh, delete at index. Is that it? That's the Ruby way of doing things. So we'll split that, tap it, resulting in a block where we can use the array. And we can simply say, uh, array shift. But will that return the original array then? 
tap, in the end it'll return the original array, right? Let me try that. I need to find that out for myself, so just to, to hammer it home. Um, we'll have an array, a, b, and now... Oh, no, let's, let's work with a literal array, even. Um, so a, b, tap, array, array shift. That's exactly what I want. Thank you, QP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it would do, but I, I needed to see it just to get it into my brain. And uh, that way I can actually... Ooh, that's cool. So I can actually say tap. Wait. How is it supposed to work? Okay, so we can do this. That's even more elegant. That's what I meant earlier with uh, what I wrote was very unRuby-esque. That's how Ruby is supposed to work. And I think it was reject that I was thinking about, but reject um, does comparisons. Um, so it's for more complex cases, I think, if I remember that correctly. So you can actually say, um, throw out all elements that start with a B or something. Um, and uh, uh, in my case, I just want to throw out the first element. And that actually does it doesn't it? Let's uh, start our bot again. And now, quote, wizard. Give it to me. Yes. Okay, after a lot of plumbing, um, I've actually reached my goal of being able to write a simple handler for my chatbot. Yeah, and of course, uh, later I'd like to add something like a database, so we can actually um, persist things from chat, um, instead of having it hard-coded in the bot itself. That was just a proof of concept here, but uh, that's how my framework is supposed to work. You have a um, you simply register your command handler, you say which um, events you'd like to subscribe, and then you define a call method uh, that does what you want it to do. And in my case, uh, it's simply check if we have a quote command, and then we send a quote text that depends on the argument of my quote command. And that's it. I've already um, stopped the, the the bot again. Uh, I need to find a way to to keep it running persistently. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll save that as well. So there's another quote, and we call it uh, "Senior Asshole." Um. So I guess, and of course I'm going to use an international uh, date format. Oops. ISO 8601 for the win. Um, so, come on, one pocket pip, try it out.
It doesn't yield the index, but you can make it with, with index method. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that that is getting a bit too complex, I think. Uh, how did we implement it now? Um, let me... I'll keep the bot running in the background, but there's not much to play with. You know, it only has the plan command and the quote command yet. But uh, we are good to go. Um, I guess I'll... Uh, well, there's not much to move into the library. I've just, I have just have to release the library um, as it is. Um, so... Uh, where's my message class? Yeah, that that is exactly uh, uh, like uh, it, it, you, you can really read how it works. Uh, you, you take the chat message text, split it by white space, and then you take the resulting array and shift away the first element, and that's it. And thanks to tab, we get um, the rest of the array instead of the uh, element we shifted, which is the command. And um, this repetition can also be factored away. We'll make a private method uh, command uh, parts. So we can use this. Yeah, I, I don't have words anymore. What do you call these? The split up command. Let's restart the bot. Let's find out if it still works. Looks like it. Quote wizard. Yep. Okay, stopping it again. Okay. Quite happy with the result today. Very happy with the result today. So, what do you think? Is that easy enough to start building bot commands and um, taking care of things without having a, a huge list of methods or, or things like that. You simply create a class for each command you'd like to support. And then, of course, it depends on the complexity of the implementation, um, how long this class is going to be. But um, yeah, in the future, I'd like to um, uh, a DSL. That's an interesting thought. Let me write that down, because I'll have to think about that. Uh, where are my notes and learnings? So, um, question. Does it make sense to create a chatbot DSL? So that's even a step uh, far uh, one step more, not having handy classes that you can use to implement your bot, but having a DSL. Uh, that's in, that's an interesting thought. I'll I'll ponder that. Suggested by Kisor. Yeah, you you still would have to have uh, code to implement your. Um, your uh, command, but um, to be honest, uh, DSL 
is more the, the previous state of the gem I used. And maybe I'll return to that. DSL meaning domain-specific language, so it's a language to, to write chatbots in. Um, and this uh, DSL would be an abstraction layer on Ruby. And I can show you how this um, might look like, because that's how the gem, uh, the Twitch chat gem works. Uh, you simply say on, and then you say the, uh, the uh, message type, in this case, user message, do, and then you have your implementation. So on would be a, a pseudo command. It's not a Ruby command. It would be a, a method in a, in a specific class. Um, but still, um, if I don't want, uh, I I actually um, stopped doing that and went the the class way because that quickly um, becomes something very convoluted. I, that leads people to put the whole implementation into this block, which means this is uh, something like this. And um, that's not something I would like to tempt people to do. So I rather force them to implement a class where they actually can uh, create clean code. <laughs> it could err on blocks longer than three lines, but uh, yeah, let's see. This thing uh, will evolve. Um, uh, we are only at the beginning and um, I'm only developing ideas at the moment. So, uh, uh, for example, the uh, these methods that allow me to check for a command or check for command arguments. Um, that's exactly the approach I'd like to take here, where I have an idea and I need to implement it and uh, I need the, the tools for that. So I create the tools. And the tools all go into my Twitch bot gem. Um, so I can then use them in my 10x uh, bot Im implementation. So 10x will, for the time being, always be a example implementation of a bot using the Twitch bot gem. Um, it might become something bigger. Um, <clears throat> I can imagine um, uh, building it as far as something like Nightbot, but um, uh, that's not going to be next week. Um, so yeah, as far as I am at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy because um, having to implement two methods and a few helper methods to keep my main method short, that's perfect. Well, Nightbot is simple on a certain level, but um, uh, for example, Nightbot also has a web in interface. Um, it also supports Discord, so it's it's quite a bit more complex than what I have in hand at the moment. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll get there. It's a nice project to work on on this stream because uh, it uh, I can exercise my, my coding muscles and uh, I get something productive out of it that I even can use in my own channel. It's, it's awesome. I'm very happy. So let's uh, satisfy um, Reek here and add a uh, descriptive comment. Uh, this class handles the exclamation mark quote command. And I guess uh, these lines are too long. We could use here docs here. Uh, something like this. Mm. 
And in that case, I think I can even use the double quotes, can't I? Still not happy. Put a comma for the last item. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Ha! Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Uh, still unterminated string. I think I need to put this here. Nope. Oh no, now it's about indentation. Yeah, okay, fine. No squiggly lines anymore. Uh, you heard Canada GDP lost about 171 billion during these couple of months. Will people in Canada be able to afford your bot? Bot is open source. Pretty sure Canada will greatly benefit from having my Twitch chat bot. Very confident that I'll be able to uh, return Canada's economy back to previous heights. Depending on how long this crisis uh, is going to be, 10x might actually compete in the next uh, election for uh, Prime Minister. I'll probably rename the bot then to Justin 10x. All right, folks. Looks like my brain is complete mush now. Um, but uh, happy with the result. What I'm going to do is I'll um, clean, up, clean up things a bit, uh, make a few nice commits. Uh, the repositories are open source. You'll, f you'll find them under uh, github.com slash tubis. Uh, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow night, I think. Uh, normally, I'd be back on, on Friday. But I thought, well, um, I have so much fun uh, coding and I have a bit of time um, Thursday night as well. So I thought I'd add another slot to my uh, weekly schedule. So um, if uh, the stars align, I'll be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. UK or Ireland time. And we'll probably continue with this. Um, until then, I'll check what uh, the next steps should be. But um, we're off to a good start. And um, I guess uh, it's time to pick someone to raid. And then I'll be off to dinner. So let me reload my uh, streamers list. And in the meantime, could you do me a favor? Copy the part starting with slash me and the rest of the line. And uh, we'll paste that uh, into our targets channel when we rate them. So it gets a little bit flooded with our text message. And let's see if you get a, a sandwich out of this. Um, we are going to... Who can we raid? Let's reload my page here. Let's see. I'd say we raid Code Rushed who's implementing sophisticated Dungeons and Dragons spell logic in C-sharp. Writing spells in... in C-sharp. That's going to be interesting. Okay, folks, um, if you don't yet follow the stream, please do so. 
Um, follow my Twitter account at GWiz, where I send notifications for my streams as well, um, among other things. And um, yeah, I'd I hope to see you again uh, tomorrow night. Um, and stick around for, for the raid. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Cheers.